Tony Blair's brilliant new book costs just £25. What a steal. But how many bullets could you buy the British Army with that money? The answer is 83. Right. Uh, will Tony Blair ever say sorry for taking us into an illegal war? He uses the S word a lot in his new <laughs> book. Uh, did I tell you how utterly fantastic it is? I mean, compared to other books by, by lesser people like Lord Mandison, it's so reasonably priced as well and, and fresh out this morning. I think that's enough about Tony Blair. You can get the rest from the BBC. Um, <laughs> The fact is, Tony has never apologised for actually taking us to war. Instead, in his book, he dances about saying, sorry for this, I'm sorry for that. He, he is, and I'm quoting here, desperately sorry for the lives cut short, sorry for the families whose bereavement is made worse by the controversy over why their loved ones died, sorry for the utterly unfair selection that the loss should be theirs. Not only that, but he's shed many tears over the years. Do you see what I mean? He comes so close to admitting he's sorry for all of it, but he just can't bring himself to apologise for starting the whole thing, for invading without a UN mandate. He believes Saddam Hussein would have tried to get weapons of mass destruction had coalition troops not moved in to stop him, believes, but could never present us with any evidence. Some of the families of the 179 servicemen and women who lost their lives in the Iraq war weren't happy. A Reg Keyes, whose son Tom Twenty was killed there, reckons Blair's trying to protect his political reputation. How did Reg put it? A cynical attempt to sanitise Blair's legacy. But maybe we're expecting too much from Labour's most successful PM of all time. If he felt he was doing the right thing seven years ago, if he was full to bursting with zeal and righteousness as he launched the invasion, then how can he square those those profound feelings with the growing mountain of evidence that suggest he was completely wrong, Tracy Ann. Look, it's difficult. How many, um, how many world leaders have, in history have ever gone on record to apologise for going into war? Is there any noted cases? Well, I suppose, of such... by and large, they didn't have to uh, but... because the war was legitimate. I mean, you think. Britain, we, have, we haven't launched an unprovoked attack on a nation for hundreds of years until Tony Blair came along. We always responded to attempts to invade us. It's difficult. I, I think, you know, it, it, hindsight is a, very, is a very powerful thing. And I, 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 I would like to believe at the time that he truly believed the information that he had been given. And he truly believed that um, okay. Saddam was 40 minutes away or 40 seconds away from firing a weapon of mass destruction. I think what's more worrying and what he should be uh, apologising for is that they went into this war, an illegal war, with absolutely no foreseeable end game. There was no plan. It's all very well to smash if you don't, if you can't restructure. And they had, they have, had, there seems to have been no plans to restructure Iraq or Afghanistan. And I think that's what's worrying. But, uh, I think he uses the S word a lot, Pickens. He uses the S word a lot more than I expected. Expected, a lot more than we saw during the inquiry, you know, when he, he absolutely wouldn't say it, really, when he was being cross-examined. I, I think the awful thing, the, the problem he had also was the fact that he was Prime Minister and he made the, the decision. He was greatly influenced, I think, by Bush, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. America had never been violated. Like, we've been violated, this country, all the time. You know, we've always had wars, Ireland, we've, all, all sorts of things have happened, bombings in this country. They could not believe it when the Twin Towers went down. So he, Bush, reacted. Now, Bush, I think, is the one who is at fault and should say sorry. But then I think Tony Blair, as Prime Minister, felt that we had to join with America to do something about this. And I do but believe... Been, but he's been ultimately... It's all wrong. Everything he took us into war for was yeah, wrong. But it had nothing right. to do with the Twin Towers. But it's true. Right? But it had nothing to do with no, the Twin Towers. That was your first right. statement: was the Twin Towers going down? It had nothing to do with it. The weapons of mass destruction. But he didn't know did, that at the time. The though. weapons. They knew. They, knew. they knew. We knew. We knew that Al Qaeda wasn't. Iraq was yeah. on its knees from the previous invasion. George W. Bush, it was on its knees. It had no electricity most of the time. Limited I mean, the, water. The main thing, I said, that what I was taught at school is, was the United Nations was set up after the war okay, to stop war this yeah, sort yeah, yeah. of thing happening. Yeah. Uh, and they said it was an Ill illegal... And well, it, they said it just we needed... Divided. Hans Brick said we needed time, we needed time, we needed yeah. time. And he just so, so did that to him and said, no, yeah. we're going. It was Batman and Robin syndrome, wasn't it? I mean, Bush was, you know, but took him along as his... The, uh... the thing I'm trying to get to is there's so much pressure on him to say sorry. And in the book, he says sorry for all the things that I listed there, the bloodshed, the loss, the, the, the fact uh, to the parents that their children had taken a bullet for him, for the country mm. or whatever. And I was uh, today's producer. She was talking me around. She said, well, maybe... 
If you truly, truly, truly believe something at the beginning, even though you're then subsequently proven to be completely wrong, you can't, you can't step down and say, well, actually, I was completely wrong at the beginning. You can only apologise for the, the things that followed. You yeah. can't yeah, apologise no, exactly. for the right. initial exactly decision. Right. That's the way. I think he... F I really do believe that he fervently... But I don't believe he was... Any, you know, Blair but was not... But belief is not the business we should be in. That's the problem. He, it's, belief is what you do when you go to church. You know, if, if, if you hold religious views. He should have been working on facts. And if the chatter... I the, mean, uh, the mass destruction thing, I don't think he thought that was there. I mean, then, then they got Hussain, and he said, well, we, we did that, but that wasn't the reason he went over there So, for. in your opinion, Matthew, what do you think, what do you think he should be saying? I think he should apologise. I think he should apologise because I think only then will he he be allowed to move forward with his life and we as a country will be able to go. The line will be drawn but because the Daily Mail his life is going to run that forever. What does he get? He's the world's most popular and the highest earning uh, world leader that has ever been in the world. And how the did he earn his money? One million pounds from a Korean company that now owns an oil field that he helped liberate in Iraq by using an illegal war. 179 British servicemen and women die and he makes a million pounds off a deal that gives an oil field that we liberate in Iraq to a Korean firm. How can that be right? Let's throw it open to you. Has he got anything to apologise for, Kirsty? Well, Sarah lost her brother in Iraq. She's on line one. Morning, Sarah. Morning, Matthew. So, uh, will you be rushing down to the shops to, to buy your copy of the book? Well, actually, I've got a very good uh, stockpile of toilet paper in the house, so no, I won't be. <laughs> uh, if, the book, if the book contained a, a more profound apology, uh, would you be tempted to buy it then? Absolutely no. Tony Blair was given absolutely every opportunity to do the right thing. As the Prime Minister, it is not about him doing what he believes. It's about him listening to his country and his advisers, not going off, just doing what he wants to. I could believe the sky is pink, but I can't yeah. carry on and just carry on and do whatever I want, regardless of the people around me, because there are far-reaching effects. Right. And, you know, there were many, many people that were affected, both serving, non-serving, bereaved, you know, just... Just general Joe Public, who every day went about this, but um, a, a PR-managed, stage media you know, book um, that comes out with um, the word sorry in it. Um, but they're just words. Actions speak louder than words. OK, OK, OK. Uh, so you don't want Tony Blair to apologise for starting the whole thing? I would like him to not do it from a safe distance. I'd like him to actually come and meet with the people who are affected. And then and only then, um, yeah, I would like him to say sorry, because I think he actually he let the country down. OK, Sarah, I'm not going to let you go without telling us a bit about your brother. What was his okay. name? What happened to him? You make me cry. <laughs> it was Sergeant Bob O'Connor, and he was one of the ten that, that were killed when the Hercules was brought down uh, on Iraq's first election day which we could have attained if we'd gone in the right way anyway. So, you know, there's so many soldiers that are killed and so many names that it's not long enough, but we've got great serving um, personnel and great families and great bereaved lost, lost guys, and thank you for the show that actually gives them the platform. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Yes, Sarah oh, dear. Uh, we have Clive next on line two. Clive, good morning. Good morning. Uh, do you want an apo Do you want a full apology? I mean, will it ever happen? He'll never apologise. He's incapable of apologising truthfully. Because, well, basically, because I know it may sound strange, because he's a religious person. Mm -hmm. He's gone totally dogmatic, anti Catholic, sorry. And um, because when you believe in religion, it puts you apart from reality. It, the consequences of his actions, he couldn't really envisage at the time. I don't think he realised what it's like. He couldn't take his wife out of the back and get her killed, or anybody else's that he knows. But there's literally hundreds of thousands of dead people about now because of his actions. It should be a United Nations decision, not his. But he couldn't see that. He believed he was right. And he went ahead with it anyway. It's really interesting, cos um, I share your view about the religious aspect to this as well. I certainly don't think... It, I, to what degree it having his faith, to what degree it influenced his decisions, we will never know. But 
I think it influenced it apart. We'll never know, but it's an interesting call. Thank you, Clive. It's OK, in line four, we have Stephen. Stephen, good morning. Good morning, Matthew. Uh, do you expect an apology one day, or do you think it's, it's literally impossible for Tony Blair to give us that? I actually think the question is redundant, because I would like a politician to turn around and say, we don't have a choice. They have rendition flights landing on our military airfields. You know, we need their satellites to re re launch our nuclear weapons in the first place, as far as I'm aware. I don't think we, he's got anything to apologise for because he has no choice. We always have a choice, Stephen. You can't say we didn't have a choice. No, of no, course no, we no. have a choice. We haven't got a choice, man. No, I... Stephen, at this particular junction, uh, before we went into Iraq the second time, there were several choices that were available. And the one that I found really interesting is whether or not we align ourselves with Europe, the majority of Europe, or with the United States and our special relationship. Really Europe, that. Europe seemed by and large opposed to a conflict, uh, and they were pulling their sort of pulling their heads in all the time. And America, very gung ho and very keen on a conflict, and we chose to go with our with the special relationship rather than the geographical relationship, rather than feeling part of the EU. And I don't think Tony Blair is. I don't think he was the prime minister that. I don't think he did put us at the heart of Europe, and I think that decision to go to war kind of proved that. I, I feel, Matthew, that uh, American arrogance is the one single thing in this world that needs to be dealt with. And you don't think Tony Blair demonstrated any arrogance? I don't think he had a choice. Well... I don't think he had a choice. I don't think we have a choice. It's all about the Americans, and I'm very glad... Stephen, 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 I, yeah, I'll tell you why you're wrong, because people made choices all the way through, right? George Galloway, he made a choice to stand up and, what does he call him, a... Uh, a, a, a wolf in wolf's clothing, or whatever he called Tony Blair. He made his stand oh. against Labour going into war. He got kicked out of the Labour Party for it. Um, Robin Cook, he made his choice. He said, you know, I'm not going to go with this, and he stepped down. Claire Short, now, she could have made a choice, but she decided to go, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll go on with the war, and then afterwards said, oh, I was really against it. You know, there are choices that our Cabinet ministers made all the way down the line, all the way down the line. Thank you, Stephen. I wouldn't be quoting George Galloway as a, as a sort of mainstay of a, of a politician. Well, actually, to... I would. Would because you? Because he's one of the few people who stood up and said, I'm opposed to this war, I'm opposed to an illegal well, invasion, George I'm Galloway prepared... was, George Galloway wasn't George Galloway photographed shaking hands with the rapist murdering yes. sons of, 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 uh, of, a, of, of Saddam Hussein. Well, and wasn't Tony Blair photographed with Colonel Gaddafi who blew hundreds of people through his actions out of the airline, who we now do business with? Such is Hasn't quality. Tony Blair gone and met members of the IRA? You know, who also blew people up. At some point, you know, you'll embrace the enemy because otherwise you remain in conflict. But it wasn't... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> One more, please. OK, go. we have Matt on line three. Matt, good morning. <coughs> uh, good morning, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, do you expect, at any point, a, a full apology from Tony Blair? I, I don't think he needs to. I don't think he needs to apologise for anything, because it's his job. He's the Prime Minister. We elect people to make difficult decisions that you or I or most people cannot do. At the time, he thought it was just, and he felt wholeheartedly it was the right thing right. to do. Whether or not it was... Uh, well, hang on, hang on, hang on, because I'm with you 100% so far, but when the evidence you submit turns out to be totally wrong, what do you do then? I think it's a changing world. The, the wars we are fighting do not play by our Western rules. Now, if we have to falsify or make up a couple of things to do the right thing by removing one of the most dangerous men in the world at that point... Well, where, where was the evidence that he was one of the most dangerous men in the world? I would have said at that point that we went in, he was on his knees. And, in fact, historically, we've now been proven he was on his knees. He had... Do you remember in the first Gulf War, it was the elite Republican Guard, then it was just the Republican Guard, and then it was, where are these guys, you know? <laughs> <sighs> Matt, I've been told we've got to go. Presumably, I might be being fired. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> nice thing is we had a nice balanced discussion. Thank you for the calls.